time we're having an online Bible study and I trust that the Lord is going to take charge. So get your Bibles, your writing materials and your Bible study manual for this exciting time. The Lord is going to take charge of this. Open your hearts to receive the word of the Lord this evening. The Lord is ready to bless us. The Lord is ready to fill our hearts with, his, with himself in Jesus' name. So let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for this wonderful time in your presence. Thank you for all you have done in our lives. Father, we, we commit this Bible study into your hands and we ask, oh God, that you will take charge. We open our hearts to receive your word this evening. We ask, oh God, that let your undiluted word, oh God, um, re, um, fill our hearts in the name of Jesus, that we will not remain the same, that our hearts will be enlightened, our eyes will be opened, our ears will be opened from your word this evening in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we give you all adoration. Take over the, um, the Bible study coordinator. We ask, O oh God, that let your word come forth through his mouth in the name of Jesus. Be exalted and be glorified, for in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Before we go further with today's discussion, we have a song this evening to, to present. And the title of today's song is, Your latter will be greater than your past. The Lord has said so many things to us and we know that this is not our level. This is not our limit. The Lord is taking us to greater heights. The Lord is taking us to greater places. And we are declaring this evening that our latter will be greater than our past. We are not looking at where we are right now. We are looking at where God is taking us to. Amen. Your latter will be greater than your past. You will be blessed more than you could ask. Despite all that has been done, your best is yet to come. And your latter will be greater. Your latter will be greater. Your latter will be greater than the rest. Your latter will be greater than your past. Oh, you will be blessed more than you could ask. Despite all that has been done, your best is yet to come, and your latter will be greater. Your latter will be greater. Oh, your latter will be greater than the rest. All things are possible. Our latter will be greater than our past. In Jesus' name. Um, at this very moment, we are going to go forward with the Bible study. And I will invite our brother, Mr. Shedrach Tukura. He's going to take us into another level. So open your hearts this evening. 
I trust you that at the end of today's Bible study is going to be you will testify that the Lord has met you where you are right now. Don't be, don't feel limited that you are that you are not in church. We are in church right now, even though it's an online service. But open your hearts, open your hearts, and allow the Holy Spirit take charge this evening. So I invite Shedrak Tukura to take charge. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be seated in front of you, you watching us from your mobile devices or whatever gadget you are using, your laptop, your tablet. You are welcome to Bible study. We are going to be discussing using the manual, studies in the book of Zachariah, an equa study material for churches. For those of us that are just joining us, and you are not conversant with the word EQUA. EQUA is an acronym for Evangelical Church Winning All. You are welcome to Bible study. Today, a beautiful topic will be discussed, and we are going to be taking our text from the book of Zechariah. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn with me your Bibles, whether they be hard copy Bibles or electronic Bibles, to the book of Zechariah, chapter 4. Verse 8 to, 8 to 10. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. Uh, our topic this evening is Despise not the days of small beginnings. Despite not the days of small beginnings. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. I read. Then another message came to me from the Lord. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple, and he will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven's armies has sent me. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. So the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. Praise the Lord. Our aim for today's study is to understand what it means not to despise small beginnings. To understand what it means not to despise small beginnings. By way of introduction, you have probably heard this saying, dream big, start small, and build deep. We are living in a world where most people want to start big. They dream big and want to start big. This happens a lot with graduates from almost all professions. The results in most cases are catastrophic. Today, we will see how God challenged Zachariah with a question in verse 10. Who despises the day of small things? Hallelujah. Zerubbabel with Joshua, they were given a responsibility to rebuild the temple after the captivity uh, and the return from Babylon. But one very important thing that we are going to be considering is how we as Christians need to understand the place of little beginnings. Some versions will say small beginnings. Other versions will say humble beginnings. And this is something that once we as children of God understand, it will propel us to the point of achieving and fulfilling purpose in our, life, in our lives as children of God. So we'll begin out by asking, what are small beginnings? What are small beginnings and how do we sometimes despise these small beginnings that we are talking about? Small beginnings are little steps, seemingly insignificant but very important. Little steps, they seem insignificant, but they are very important. And these steps are taken towards achieving a larger venture, a goal, or reaching a desired destination. If you want to build a house, you build brick by brick, brick by brick, and you achieve a complete project when everything is done. This 
in the context of building a house can be tagged as the small steps towards achieving the greater goal of the house itself. So when we talk about small beginnings and we relate it to the Christendom, the life of a Christian, the life of a child of God, you and I. This saying exists that says, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. You see, there's an innate desire to achieve purpose. There's an innate desire to live up to responsibilities, to deliver on a project, to deliver on a mandate. The understanding of starting small cannot be overemphasized. You see, the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6, talks about it being not by our mind, neither is it by our power, but by the Spirit of God. So even in starting small, even in understanding the importance of small beginnings, we need to understand the place of the importance of the Spirit of God. So now that we have talked about what small beginnings or little beginnings in this context mean, how do we despise little beginnings? Mind you, little beginnings can be the place of being faithful or loyal as an apprentice. Little beginnings can be the place of sitting down to learn in order for you to be a greater teacher someday. Little beginning can be writing that first chapter. Little beginning can be starting that business. Little beginnings can be anything that requires you to begin a venture and begin small. For some of us, we might want to uh, engage in something and we are already thinking about the 50 billion naira or dollar that we need to start. But it's something that we can begin with 50,000. Why not begin? I pray that we we'll receive encouragement as we study today together in Jesus' name. Little beginnings. How do we despise these little beginnings? One of the major reasons why you find children of God despise little beginnings is because it is little. You know, a lot of us will have wished to leap into something great and hit it big. But starting small for some of us is a challenge because we are itching already. We are itching already to begin big. We are itching already to, to just wake up and we are already swimming in billions. We are already swimming in millions or trillions. But for some of us, there is a process that we need to go through. There is a process that God is taking us through so that we will not lose out in the end, so that we will not fail in the responsibility that is put in our hands. There is a place of preparation preceding manifestation. And this place of preparation is in the small or humble beginning. The Bible, in the book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 23, it says, You have been faithful with little, I will put you in charge of great. For some of us, we think handling little things doesn't amount to anything. But that is where we cultivate discipline. If you are faithful in little, then greater will be committed into your hand. That's the word of God for you, not me. One of the ways we also despise little beginnings is because of unbelief, because of lack of faith, and lack of confidence in God. You know, if you want to consider, or you want to judge the mustard tree by the mustard seed, you will not be able to reconcile the two. A lot of us will prefer that our seed is as big as a mango seed. Because that might, in a way, guarantee that the tree will be large or the tree will last long. Some of us, what we need is a seed as small as a mustard seed. Start little. Start little. How do we despise little beginning? For some of us, it is shame. We are ashamed that, Kai, for a person of my class and status, I don't think it will be, it will be nice for my caliber to start little. For some of us, the thing that you have to do to get the capital going is to be an Uber driver. But some of us cannot be Uber drivers because uh, our shoulder pad is very large. How do we despise 
the days of humble beginning. Starting small. For some of us, it's comparison. We have peers or colleagues or those ones that have gone ahead of us and they are uh, seated up high, achieving great things with billions, with, with a lot of things to their name. And we don't really know what it took them to get there. We are celebrating the product and not interested in the process. So this unhealthy comparison makes us to despise the days of humble beginning. The list goes on and on. But we should understand in all this that the days of humble beginnings is very important. Starting small is important. That understanding of starting small is important. And we should not allow any of these things that I have itemized today to stop us from starting small. For some of us, the call of God upon our life warrants that we sit and learn. The call of God upon our life warrants that we start small. And I pray that God will help us, that we will be humble. A version says, do not neglect the days of humble beginning. That humility will set in in our hearts. And we will allow God to take us through the process. So that we will not fumble when it becomes great. In Jesus' name. Oh, quickly. Two points that I want to point out on reasons why some of us despise days of humble beginning. Is the place of patience. Especially in our generation, a lot of us are not patient. We want to hit the ground running. The place of intimidation. We allow a lot of things to intimidate us. And it affects our confidence. I pray that God will help us. With this understanding we are getting, with this expose, with this exposition from the word of God, we will get this understanding and we will run with it in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's our first question. The question that asks us, what are small beginnings and how do we sometimes despise them? Now that we have dealt with this part, let's move on to the next. What was the promise of God's word to Zechariah in verses 8 and verse 9? I'm going to read. Turn your Bibles to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. I'll read that from here. Verse 8. Then another message came to me from the Lord. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of the temple, and he will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven's armies have sent me. Praise the Lord. What was the promise of God's word to Zechariah? If we see verse 8, if we see verse 8, verse 9, that we have read, we understand that the Lord gave his word. And the word of God comes with the power to achieve. The word of God came with the power to achieve. Why did God say to Zerubbabel that, sorry, what was the promise of God's word to Zechariah in verse 8? The promise of God is that he will be with you he who has begun a thing in your life will bring it to completion. We can also see this in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20b, that says that, and I will be with you to the end of the age. This is the confidence that we have in the word of God. This is the confidence that we have in his word, that he will be with us to the end of the age. Quickly, let's see the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 4. I'm encouraged by what Haggai, chapter 2, verse 4 says. It says, but now, the Lord says, Be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people still left in the land. And now get to work. For I am with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. For I am with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. This is the promise of God to Zechariah. It is the promise of God to you as an individual. What is it you have been fidgeting about? And you think starting small will not yield anything. The promises of God to you this evening is that start in the power of the Lord. Start. Do not despise the days of little beginnings. Do not despise the days of small beginnings. And the, the Lord God Almighty will hold your hand and see you through in Jesus' name. 
Point number three. The question says, why did God say that Zerubbabel will start and complete? Why did God say that Zerubbabel will start and complete? Complete or complete the building of the temple. This is also something we are considering in the book of, I uh, mean, in, in, in verse 8 and 9, uh, like we have read earlier on. But there is, there, is, there is something I want to bring to our notice. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6 and 7, Paul was speaking and he said that I, Paul, have planted, Apollos have watered, but it is of the Lord that brings increase. It is not by power, neither is it by might. You see, there are a lot of people that have started ventures and they have not been able to complete. So you see that in the, in the, in the, te in the text that I brought earlier about Paul planting Apollos watering, it is not about who planted, neither is it about who waters. But if God doesn't bring increase, then even what has been planted or what is being watered will not grow. So the importance of what is said in our third question that why did God say to Zerubbabel that Zerubbabel will start and complete the building of a temple? It is because he, God, have given his word and is letting us understand that you, Zerubbabel, you will start and you, you will finish. This is a prayer that I covet for myself that the word of God to me, Shadrach, is that Shadrach, you will lay the foundation and you will complete it in the name of Jesus Christ. This understanding is what we should get from our study today. That the word of God to us has given us assurance. That we will begin a project and we will finish. You see, fear is a factor that holds a lot of people down from beginning. This small beginning that we are talking about. And the word of God has come to dispel fear that is sitting in every, anybody's heart this evening. His word has come to tell you that you will start, you will lay the foundation. And you will complete it in the name of Jesus Christ. The fourth point of our study today is, why did the people rejoice when they saw Zerubbabel with the plumb line in his hand? If we read Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 with the NIV version, we will see the word that is used there as the capstone. Capstone is the final piece of the building. In the days of building pyramids, that last a stone that is on the pyramid is referred to as the capstone. Figuratively, the capstone is the word that is used to signify completion, the item that shows that you have finished a project. And then, why did the people rejoice when they saw Zerubbabel with the capstone in his hand, as it is in verse 10 of where we are studying in Zechariah chapter 4? <laughs> I <w> <laughs> I would like to use the analogy of a mother. You know, nobody can actually quench the happiness that a mother derives when they see their child either graduate or get an appointment or achieve something because they have been there from the start. They know how it, it, it was when this child was trying to take the first step to crawl. And all of a sudden, this child has grown up and is achieving these great and mighty feats already. We see, let's, let's consider the word of God in the book of Haggai chapter 2 verse 3. So that you understand, um, Haggai chapter 2 verse 3, I read, Does anyone remember this house, this temple, in its former splendor? How, in comparison, does it look now to you? Those that were there when the temple lay in ruins, and especially them, that have witnessed the temple being completed, you can, you can imagine the joy that they have already. You can imagine the joy that they have already. So the place of rejoicing will come naturally when there is a completion of a project. Rejoicing will come naturally when there is an achievement of a goal. So definitely, when the people saw that Zerubbabel has in his hand the capstone, rejoicing, is what followed. I pray that the Lord will take us to the point where we rejoice at the completion of whatever project it is that we will start and observe the place of small beginnings in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the fifth point of our study today is how can we see God 
in the little projects that we embark on? How can we see God in the little project that we embark on? Some of, some of us can testify to the hand of God in the little things that we have started or begun. For some of us, where we are today, if they were to tell us that we will be there, I mean we will be here, from the way we began at that point, we will say no. So definitely the hand of God is evident in how God has brought us from the days that we began up to the point that we are right now. God's hand is ever present to help us. God's hand is ever present to lead us. God ha God's hand is ever present to guide us. The hand of God will shield. The hand of God will protect. The hand of God will lead us. Praise the Lord. We see questions coming in to our study. And by the grace of God, God will help us to see how we can handle the questions in the time that we have. So, by way of um, conclusion, before we tackle some of the questions that we have, this is an encouragement to someone. There are a lot of things that God has placed in your hands to achieve with your life. But they have to be a beginning. It might not necessarily be that this beginning will be as great as you think it will be. It most likely will be little. Have you despised or are you despising the place of little beginning? Then the word of God has come to you strong and mighty this evening. That you should not despise the days of little beginning. O oh, you man of God, minister of God, that God have expressly called to the place of ministry. And you see that the only place and the people you are ministering to is audience of one, two, three. And you are wondering, when will I handle the congregation of 10 million? My brother, my sister, the word of God has come to encourage you today that do not despise the days of humble beginning. In your project of reconciliation, permit me to say that it might require you to take the first step to send that text message. Pick your phone and call. No matter how turbulent you think that conflict has been, Small step will bring about reconciliation. Take that step. Write that book. Begin that project. Start that study. Don't say I am too old. I have white hairs on my head. Days of humble beginning. For some of us, it is pride. Pride has kept us down. How, how can a person of my caliber sit and learn under this small person? The key to your deliverance, God might be putting it through the hand of that small boy, or even this little me that is sitting and sharing with the word of God. I'm sharing the word of God with you this evening. I pray that God will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you to be humble and recognize the importance of the place of little beginning in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's see if we can tackle one or two questions before we call it quick. So, can one's little beginning be too little to ever become great? Expressly, no. You see, um, look at how the building of the temple came up. If you see the verse 9 of where we studied, verse 9 and verse 10, it says that the Lord of God, I mean, the Lord God Almighty has said that the temple will be built. But there was a process. The process is that the foundation will be laid. See, I, as a person, will have expected that since it is God that has said that this temple will be built, that the walls will just fall down, bam, pillars will just spring up from the ground, and in one day, as a matter of fact, in one hour, the temple will stand, and everybody will know that God in his might has erected the temple. But there was a process that he wanted us to learn. The place of putting one brick on the other. The process of putting it layer by layer. So, in answer to your question, no, it cannot be too small. If it, if it was about size, then the mustard seed should become extinct in the family of seeds. I pray that God will bless your understanding of the word in the name of Jesus. Another question says, what is really hindering people to start from the beginning? One of the things that can be a hindrance for a lot of people wanting to start from the beginning, beginning, is patience. For some of us, we think that 
uh, time is not on our side anymore. So if we go and start from the beginning, ah, how long will it be before I achieve that that I need to achieve at this stage of my life? But I am grateful for the word of God. It didn't say that you should start from the middle. It says the days of little beginning. It didn't say the days of little end. I pray that you receive encouragement and understanding that it is necessary for you to honor the place of little beginnings and start from the beginning so that you will not be a, a half-done commodity, permit me to use that word, an underbaked product. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. We, on our online platforms, please let us go ahead and drop um, our questions. And by the grace of God, our reverend, our senior reverend and our associate will do well to respond to some of the questions that we have not been able to respond today. Oh, okay. So we have another question that says, how can young Christians defeat pride and start that idea little? Hmm. This is important. How can young Christians defeat pride? The Bible said pride goeth before a fall. So really, what is it that is culminating or fanning the embers of pride in you when there, is a lot, when there are a lot of things that you need to achieve in your life? So by way of answering, one of the ways that you can receive help is to allow yourself to yield to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you humility. And you will know where you need to remove your crown and keep on the ground to begin little. You see, we, we want to live large, but we don't want to pay the price. And so, when we look at other people that are already making it, our own shoulder will go up and say, okay, I can't start less. I can't go lesser. But really, that is, that is foolish. Permit me to use that word. What are you proud about? When there is a place where you can go and be humble. Receive that which you need to receive. Take the edification. Take the building that you need to be built up. And then go and do exploit. I pray that every spirit of pride that is affecting and hindering a lot of young Christians today will Live the life of everyone that is under bondage in the name of Jesus Christ. Yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit and God will help us. Praise the Lord. We have done our best to have our study in this very concise space of time so that we don't keep you too long. But you are encouraged to look at the manual and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you from the topic and the various points that we have in our manual. I'm going to read the conclusion from our manual. It says, It is sometimes very difficult, humanly speaking, for us to build courage in the days of small beginnings. Small beginnings could be in terms of church planting, set up a business, etc. What begins small, if pursued well, and God's hand is on it, can grow. Therefore, as we have seen in this study, we are not to despise humble beginnings. Praise the Lord. Our memory verse today is in the book of Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10a. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10a. I'm going to be reading with the New Living Translation. And it reads, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Even in the times and season that we find ourselves, the lockdown, the quarantine and self-isolation that is currently going on, some of you might be wondering, how, what can I begin? Start reading that book. Start learning. Start developing that relationship with your, your, your spouse, with, with your family. Learn something. That might be the place of little beginning that you need to start. The, the internet is there for, for some of us to learn uh, or to, to increase knowledge in our place of calling, in our field, in our career. Don't waste this opportunity. And I pray that the hand of God will be on everything that we hope to begin in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that has come forth. It is your word that has the ability, the capacity, and the power to come forth and establish exactly what it has come out for. Lord, we know that it is not a coincidence, it is not a mistake that you have spoken to us this evening. So we ask, O oh God, that your word will achieve exactly what it has come out for in our lives in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, there will be a springing forth of ideas from this moment on in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, you will help us to begin that which you have called us to begin, no matter how small, in the name of Jesus. I raise the standard of heaven against every spirit of pride, every spirit of fear, every spirit of timidity that is hindering a lot of us from beginning small in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for your power, O God. Speak your word to our lives. Just as you have said in your word that you said Zerubbabel will begin, Zerubbabel who have laid this foundation will see its completion. Lord, let it not be that we will start a thing and we will not see its completion. Lord, let your word come forth for our lives that we will start and we will complete in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit divine, give us the prudence that is necessary. Oh God, to see that we complete the project that we have started. That will not be like Moses that brought out your children from Egypt but was not able to take them to the promised land. Oh Father, in your mercy help us. Help us to be humble. Help us to be prudent in the name of Jesus. Lord God, let your word come to pass in our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. There is um, a decree and a declaration that I would like us to have, even in the times that we are right now. Turn with me to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 91, from verse 9 to 12. I'm going to be reading, and I would like you to say amen as we read the declaration of the word of the Lord concerning the times and the season that we are encountering right now. Verse 9 says, If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up and their hands, they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on the stone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for staying tuned to our online broadcast. By the grace of God, we'll be having other services um, online as we, um, we observe the lockdown. I would like to invite Mrs. Anne Genesis to come and close us. Thank you, Mr. Shadrach Tukura, for this exciting Bible study. I'm sure we all were happy to receive the word this evening. So we're going to end this Bible study with the song we sang earlier, My latter will be greater than my past. And I want you to declare it over your life, over your family, and over the land, and over everything that is happening around us this, at this very moment. Your latter will be greater than your past. You will be blessed more than you could ask. Despite all that has been done, your best is yet to come. And your latter will be greater, your latter will be greater, your latter will be greater than the rest. Your latter will be greater than your past. Than you could ask. That's why all that has been done. Your best is yet to 
come and your love will be greater. Your love will be greater. Your love will be greater than the rest. All things are possible. Time.